Hello, today we are seeing a very exciting game between two very strong grandmasters. The black player is coming from the Ukraine, while the white player, Daniel Friedman, he was born in Latvia and is now playing for the German Chess Federation. d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, b6. Now the position has a name, it is the Queen's Indian Defense. A solid and very reliable weapon in the arsenal of many a grandmaster. G3, that is the critical test for the Queen's Indian. Bishop B7. The alternative, Bishop A6, is uh, equivalent. So it's a matter of taste. This is a bit more solid. Bishop G2. And now in this position, the most frequent move is Bishop A6 e7 while the second move bishop b4 check is a good alternative but black played none of these moves he chose to play c5 at first glance this looks like a good and active move the idea is that after castling black would take on d4 and let's say queen takes d4 d6 black is now settling for a hedgehog setup. You see the pawns are marked in green. The a pawn is supposed to be put to a6. Then we would have all the hedgehog spines on the sixth rank. These spines and the apparent passivity of the hedgehog is what gave it its name. But appearances are deceptive. The hedgehog is quite aggressive actually, and it's very popular amongst strong players. The problem, however, for black after c5 is that white does not have to comply. He can play d5. That is the strongest move. Now, the threat is if black stays put, let's say black is playing d6, then white could just um, reinforce the point d5 following, uh, followed by e4 which would en uh, incarcerate the bishop b7. So black is forced to take the pawn on d5. Now white has lost the pawn, so it seems, but it's not quite the case. For instance, white could play knight h4. Now you see the pawn d5 is pinned, intending c takes d5 or knight c3. He could also play knight g5. Both of these moves are supposed to give white a decent advantage of about half a pawn. The best move, however, is, um, this is what the engine says, the move c takes d5. After, for instance, bishop takes d5, knight c3, bishop c6, e4, white, according to the engine, has a clear advantage of about one pawn unit, that's quite a lot. So we could actually think of this whole variation being refuted. But Daniel Friedman, he had other things in mind. I called this uh, video the Friedman variation because the move castles was played by him three times and all of the three games were won by him. And if you consider that this move was only played nine times in total, and he occupies one third of the entire body of this line, and then being that successful with it, we can, I guess, name this line the Friedman variation. This is a bit of a paradox move at first glance because you just uh, sacrificed a pawn and now you leave the pawn c4 hanging. Well, that is modern chess. After all, uh, dynamic play is what strong players are known for. So we will see, of course, what will happen after d takes c4. This is a game continuation. I want to mention that black has an alternative here. He could play d4. Actually, this move will be equalizing in the end. 
that makes the whole variation, uh, I would say, inferior to the CTHD5, which I just explained earlier. However, all of these lines are very complicated, and if Black doesn't know what to do here, if he, if he didn't make his homeworks, he can go under quite quickly, actually. So E3 is, of course, what White has to do. The, the D4 pawn has to be removed. Now we saw a game of Friedman, uh, which is the most recent of the three games. This is from the year uh, 2019, where he played it against a strong grandmaster, Itorisaga Bonelli, in Moscow. This was a World Blitz Championship. It was only a Blitz game, but, but of course a very important one. And here we saw Bonelli failing already. He played d3, and after knight c3, uh, White's position is already won. Let's uh, go a bit deeper into this line. The game continued bishop e7, queen d3, castles. And now Friedman played rook d1, which was okay, but a bit better is e4. And now after d6, bishop f4. Uh, the threat is rook d1, followed by bishop takes pawn. So the bishop has to be expelled immediately. Bishop e3, knight c6, rook 81. Black is lost because he cannot really play knight f6 due to bishop f4. You see this pawn here is very weak. We have also weak square on d5. We have an offside knight. Um, all this together is too much for black to bear. So this is uh, what kind of what could have happened in that game, but Friedman won anyway. After e3, however, black can play differently. So he he is not really in the position to just give back the pawn with d3, as we just saw. He must take the pawn on e3. This is how an email game went. And after bishop e3, bishop e7, knight c3, castles, rook e1, knight c6, knight h4, white has enough compensation. The knight is, is heading to f5 while uh, the bishop could be placed on f4 or g5. White has enough compensation and even in some initiatives, so it's more difficult for black to play this variation. Now let's go back to our game. After castling, black took the second pawn. d takes c4. Of course, a very logical move. And now comes the point. Friedman actually is offering pawn number three. <laughs> That's quite amazing, isn't it? But if you burn your bridges by, by giving up one to two pawns, I say one to two because a c4 pawn is weak, white might be able to grab it, but then he still would be down one pawn. So kind of burning one's bridges, isn't it? So if you do this, you have to follow through. You cannot say, well, I have enough of, of giving material. No, you have to be consequent. So, now in the game, Black actually already made a mistake. He took on e4 with the bishop. Let's see what the alternatives are. There's one move which also is supposed to equalize, but the position is very tricky. And this is not the kind of equal position which is easy to play. White has a strong initiative after e5, knight e4. And now there are two moves to consider. One move is knight fd2. The knight is pinned. And of course, after knight takes d2, bishop b7, uh, white is uh, winning. But black has d5. This saves his uh, position here. Now white takes, takes queen g4 attacking the pawn g7. That is a, a well-known trick, because now castling doesn't work. If you castle, uh, white is uh, winning the exchange. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot uh, play g6 either, because then I think white would continue with uh, either rook d1 or bishop h6, and you see that castling is not an option anymore. The right move is king f8, defending the pawn g7 with the king. 
which of course is a concession because now black lost the right to castle. Now after rook d1, queen e8, we have a very unclear position which the engine estimates as equal. After knight e4, an alternative way to go about is knight h4, also very dangerous for black. Um, the knight wants to go to f5, black has to capture, and now queen g4 is very strong. So now the threat is queen takes g7, then the rook would have to go to f8, after which uh, white would take the bishop on h4, followed by a bishop h6 winning. That's why black has to defend the g7 pawn actually by castling. Now white uh, recaptures one of the, yeah, the piece he just gave. Um, and now black cannot take back here on e4 because after queen takes e4, we see, we see that two pieces, a rook and the bishop are hanging. So white would win material here. After bishop e4, the only move is d5, attacking the bishop and after capturing and passing, f5 is keeping black in the game. Bishop takes f5 and now rook f5, rook f5, bishop f6. This position is very complicated. The equal says, uh, the engine says it's equal. Um, black has sacrificed an exchange here, but of course you see white's king being very vulnerable on that long diagonal. So bishop e7 is a move after e4, which is um, sufficient from a theoretical point of view, leading to a very complicated battle. But in this game, black was a bit greedy. He took pawn number three, bishop e4. Okay, now knight c3 in order to, uh, this was played in order to, to capture on e4, followed by queen d5, winning some material. So black has to react with his bishop. In the game, black took on f3. Um, yeah, that was actually the best move. Let's have a look at an alternative approach, bishop c6. This move is known from another game of Friedman. This was his first game with this variation. Friedman against Petrisor, Legnica 2013. He here played um, knight h4, which was a mistake. Let's have a look at the um, superior move, rook e1, check. Bishop e7, queen e2. Of course, after you have sacrificed three pawns, um, you have to show something quick for this material. So now the, the, the first step is not to let, to let black's king castle away into safety. That's why queen e2 is very important. d5, <coughs> black uh, uh, defending his c pawn and of course wants to get his pawn avalanche in motion. d5, d4 is in the cards now. Bishop g5, um, developing the, the last minor piece. White now would love to take on f6, which would uh, disrupt black's kingside pawn structure. d4, a logical move, takes, takes. Of course, now we see black's king not having a solid pawn shield left. Even if black should manage to castle short, the king would be very vulnerable there. Rook 81, keeping the knight on c3 and also applying cer certain pressure on the d pawn. We will see what that means in a bit. Now there are two lines here, no, three actually. One is, it's, uh, is b5, getting the pawns in motion uh, and defending the c4 pawn. But now we can sacrifice here on d4. After cd4, rook d4, which is possible because the bishop e7 is so weak, the queen cannot leave this bishop alone, obviously. So <clears throat> queen c7. And now we can play knight d5, takes, takes. White is winning because bishop takes a8 is coming. Another move would be d3. Of course, this is preventing knight takes d4, what we just saw, and the queen is under attack. 
the queen has to go to e3 and now <clears throat> what can black do he, he cannot castle away so playing b5 doesn't seem unlogical now white plays queen h6 penetrating black's position um, on the king side the queen might go to uh, g7 but the main threat is uh, just to take on on f6 what can black do defending the pawn f6 but now rook e7 is working um, if you take with the king then it is a game over soon after rook e1 let's say king d6 and now queen e4 check finishing black off Hence, black has to give his queen. Queen takes e7, rook e1. And now white is winning some material, after which he has a decisive advantage. Another move after rook a1 would be king f8, trying to <clears throat> castle by hand. But after queen takes c4, a6, in order to play b5, White can uh, disrupt black's central bar barrier, knight d4, cd4, and take on c6, having a one position because black's coordination is very bad. You can see the rooks are uncoordinated. The h8 rook is not connected to the rest of the army. I mean, if the rook would be on e8, uh, black would be okay, but this is just not the case, so black is losing here. Now let's return to our game. Uh, Fedorcho played the superior move, bishop takes f3. Queen f3, attacking the rook, knight c6, only move. Now, white is behind three pawns. What should he do? If he plays in a naive fashion, let's say rook one check, Black plays bishop e7, of course, is now threatening just to castle away into safety. Let's say queen e2 here, preventing castling because of bishop takes c6 followed by queen takes e7. Rook c8, um, protecting the knight on c6 because sometimes uh, white takes there and after d takes c6, uh, he, he might play then rook a to d1, um, having one attack because white would then control both open files so rook c1 also unpinning the knight so um, now black is able to play the knight to d4 bishop g5 knight d4 there it comes queen takes c4 now knight e6 this position is slightly better for black um, because the knight is sealing the e-file um, only slightly better because black cannot really play d5, white controls the light squares, but black has two extra pawns. So this is not appealing at all for white. So what can white do about it? Black just wants to play bishop e7, casting short. Now I'll give you a minute to, to think, uh, well, let's say as long as you want, because you, you can just press on stop now. I will now come up with a solution. If you don't press and stop, you will see what happens now. It is a move bishop h6. Our motive right now in my, my videos, this is a fantastic move. This move is uh, able to keep black's king in the king side, in some lines, in other lines, to disrupt black's uh, king side, as you will see in the game. Obviously, this move is uh, trying to freeze the bishop, f8. So after bishop e7, white could take the pawn on g7. So what can black do in this position? The, in the game, he took the bishop, which of course is the um, natural or critical response if you put the bishop there for the taking. Before we continue with the game, Let's have a look at the alternatives. Bishop e7 is actually um, a good move here. Black doesn't have a, a great choice. So bishop e7, 
bishop takes g7, rook g8. And now black uh, is faced with rook a to e1, threatening, of course, bishop takes f6. So he has to take white's bishop. And now the queen takes the knight. Uh, king f8, because uh, the rook was under attack and also white was threatening to take the knight here on c6. So king f8, only move. Attacking the queen now, as the bishop is unpinned. Queen f4. Now, uh, yeah, black has to activate his knight by unpinning it. And after queen takes c4, we have a position where black has one extra pawn, but has a lot of soft spots, especially on the light squares. Also, the coordination of his pieces is very bad because the rook on g7 is not uh, connected to the rest of the army. And the king uh, of black is of course, uh, very unsafe um, in the long run. There is uh, no safe pawn shield left as the g pawn is missing. Now let's have a look at move 2, which is knight d4. Um, check, knight e6, and now there are two options. There was an email game which saw queen takes a8, queen takes queen, bishop takes queen, g8, c6, and this position actually is more or less equal. So this would be playable for black. Hence, I suggest a novelty here. So I would play bishop f4 with white. Now, what can black do? Um, the rook is hanging now, so it must move away. Rook c8. Now comes knight b5, attacking the pawn uh, a7. And also uh, knight d6 is a good option now. What can black do? For instance, a6, just saving his pawn. Now comes knight d6. Bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop. The problem black has now here is he cannot castle. So knight g8 is um, forced in order to play knight e7 in order to finally prepare the evacuation of black's king. Now we want to mobilize our f pawn in order to counter this plan. Queen e4, knight e7, f4, intending f5, g6, g4, castles, f5, and white has a strong attack. The position is like plus 0.5 for white, but this is just an academical estimation. In a practical game, it is very difficult for black to defend such an on onslaught here. Now, let's go to go back to knight b5. d5 is another line here in order to prevent knight d6 check from happening. But now white can take the pawn, attacking the rook. The rook moves away, the knight moves away again. Now threatening knight c7 check. Uh, yeah, winning the exchange. So rook c8. Bishop h3, strong move. Now the point e6 is uh, the neurologic one because e6 is a defense between the rook e1 and the king e8. Queen e7, the knight has to be protected, also attacking the knight on b5. a4, defending this knight. Bishop e7, black plans to castle away. But now white follows up with a strong sacrifice. He has to do this, otherwise black uh, wins on material. Rook e1, of course now bishop takes e6 is a problem. So knight e4 is pretty much forced. White comes up with queen h5 check. Now g6 would be bad because of queen e5 attacking the rook on h8 and the pawn on e6. So king d8 is forced. f3 getting rid of this knight in order to reactivate the rook along the e-file. Knight f6, queen e5. Of course now bishop takes e6 is a threat. Uh, Rook e8, and actually now queen takes e6 is best according to the engine. Um, Rook c6, any, <laughs> this is a quite crazy variation. I just show you some moves 
Uh, now, without any separations, I don't want, want make it too long. This is just what the engine seems uh, or, or regards um, to 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 be the best moves for both parties. Check takes. Now the queen is under attack, uh, but of course queen takes h3 doesn't work because of queen takes c7 checkmate. So queen c6 only move. Check rook c8. Everything is forced. And of course now we don't exchange queens because we have a minus piece and of course we want to attack black's vulnerable king and now queen is seven king d8 rook is six finally this is plus equal but of course only in terms of the engine in a practical game it's very chaotic and difficult to defend for black the white threat is actually to play queen b6 after which black would have to play king d7 and then rook d6 check. Bishop takes d6, queen takes d6 checkmate would be the consequence. Very long line. Now let's go back to the game after bishop h6. So we looked at bishop e7 and the, uh, the other line was knight d4. This was the long line we just saw. Now in the game black took the bishop. Now white checked the king, bishop e7, now queen takes f6. So you see the strategic underlying of the move bishop h6 was to freeze black's bishop f8 in some lines or disrupt black's pawn structure and, and weaken the king's safety of black's position. The tactical underlying was uh, the undermining of the point f6 because now as a pawn is not standing on g7 anymore the move queen takes f6 is possible okay now we completely understood the motivation of the move bishop h6 both on a strategical and tactical level castles of course this is necessary the, the rook on h8 was hanging Queen takes h6. The queen was hanging, hanging and now saves its life by capturing a pawn. At the same time, uh, getting in touch with black's h7 pawn. Black is very soft on the light squares and if um, white would kind of be able to bring a bishop here on, on uh, the light squares on this b1 h7 diagonal without black being able to play f5, then h7 would would be black's downfall now this position is extremely difficult for black because he has so many weak spots and his king is unsafe it's not nice to defend this position very difficult very tricky white is clearly better here but objectively um black is not lost yet here uh, the only move is rook c8 that didn't happen in the game. So uh, white was threatening actually to play um, bishop takes c6 followed by rook ad1 penetrating black's uh, position. So black had to play rook c8. Now he is able to recapture on c6 with the rook. Also he is now unpinning his knight which could go to d4. Rook ad1 f5 Knight b5, threatening knight d6, knight d4, there it comes as it is unpinned. Takes, takes, takes. This position is clearly better for white. This would have been black's best bet. But in the game, black played something different. He played a normal looking move, bishop g5. Um, it makes some space for the queen. The queen at some point could go to f6 in order to help out in the defense of the king side so black played a logical looking move but actually it is a losing move queen h5 now black played f5 which was not uh, the best move if he played queen f6 white easily wins by playing knight e4 winning the bishop g5 
That's why black played f5. Black wanted to prepare queen f6. That was a game move. By taking away the square e4 from the knight, queen f6 is now a possibility. Another move would have been bishop f6, but after rook a1, white is winning. White has just too much firepower here. Now let's have a look at the game continuation f5. Intending queen f6. If black was to play another move, he would equalize with queen f6. But it is white to move. Rook a1, bringing in another piece, and now you cannot play queen f6 because of rook takes d7. Now the threat is bishop takes c6 as the d7 pawn is pinned. So rook c8, forced. And now um, Friedman, he, he finished the game uh, really in style. This was a, a perfect game he played here. Um, let's say close to perfect. Uh, he played rook d6. It's not the only good move, but it's very strong. The rook is now um, uh, yeah, controlling a couple of squares on the sixth rank, also not allowing the queen to go there, and uh, also um, putting pressure on the square f6. We will see why this is relevant uh, in a couple of seconds. Knight d4. Uh, Black wants to, to bring his knight into the game. Maybe he wants to play the knight to e6 later. It wouldn't work right now because of rook takes e6. But this might be an option later. And in some positions even rook c6. Not working now with the bishop on g2. But of course the knight is better placed here on d4 than on c6. h4 attacking the bishop. bishop and now you see why the rook is placed so powerfully on d6. Now the, the f6 bishop is under uh, attack and uh, black has to reckon with, um, well, he has to reckon with bishop, uh, knight takes f6, uh, rook f6, queen g5, check. So what did he do? He played king h8 in order to prevent a check like I just mentioned on g5. Let's have a look at one alternative line. This is our last alternative line of the game. Bishop g7 instead of king h8. Now white can win like this. Check, king h8, check again. The king has to go back and now the bishop um, is engaged in the battle. And after rook f7, knight e7, check. Black will lose material, the rook f7 is for the taking. Now the game concluded as follows. King takes uh, h8, rook e7, very very strong move, beautifully played. Maiden 1 is threatened on h7, so the rook has to be captured. And now this rook, which was nicely played to d6, fulfills its task on the 7th rank, being switched to the h-file. Now the threat is rook takes h7, king g8, queen g6 checkmate. That's why uh, black is left with only one move. He has to give back material in order to engage his queen in the defense of the soft spot h7. But by doing so, he is um, giving back more than he previously took. White now is winning a piece here on e7. Queen g7. Normally if you are a piece down you don't want to trade queens but white has an attack going on. Knight f6 was a threat so um, exchanging queens was all black could do. Takes takes. Rook d6 attacking the d pawn. Rook d8. a4 preventing black from playing b5. Knight e6. 93 and now white is prepared to pick up another pawn, the f5 pawn or the c4 pawn. That's why black resigned. I think this was a fantastic attacking game by Friedman. It's a, it's a model game for similar situations. I enjoyed it very much. I hope you did as well.